So you've got Hudson and Carter. Yep. Stables may not seem like the most regal of spots, but it is in places just like this that Queen Elizabeth has been most comfortable, most happy. She immediately comes down and, and um, understands that that horse can kind of break that barrier of someone like myself and Her Majesty. I met uh, Her Majesty in 2015. Sergeant Major Scott Williamson of the RCMP's famed musical ride got the call unexpectedly while in London. And then you end up talking for how long? For probably a good hour. And we talked, spent plenty of time talking about horses, feeding the horses that we had gifted her. So David, I'd like to introduce you to Victoria. For half so Victoria a century, is, most uh, of Queen Elizabeth's uh, reign, the Mounties have exchanged horses with the Queen. And of all the hundreds, nay thousands, the monarch has owned and loved, it was the first from the RCMP that made its mark. A black thoroughbred named Burmese, that some believe was her favorite horse ever. Burmese is obviously um, very special. It was very special to Her Majesty, and uh, therefore, of course, very special to the force. Burmese was born in Saskatchewan and after training given to the Queen back in 1969. The men from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police were on a visit to Britain. The gift they brought with them was a fine horse, a seven-year-old black man named Burmese. Retired RCMP member Al Nicholson was at that presentation. That was you. Yeah, I'm the very first one closest to the audience. I was the lead file that day. So I'm just sitting there stiff as a board. She walks up and she does a little pat on the, the wings. If I had to guess on what I would hope she would have said was she told Burmese, we'll look after her. She sure did. Burmese was the only horse she ever rode in Trooping the Color, the annual parade for her birthday. What a great job Burmese did. Goes over and lives in a palace and is treated like royalty for her whole life. What a great bloody experience. The Queen rode Burmese with U.S. President Ronald Reagan here on Burmese's nephew Centennial. But it was perhaps 1981 that sealed the deal. Right here, a pistol shot from a teen in the crowd. Police and people shocked other horses rearing up, but not Burmese. She kept her cool. That is the perfect state to be in. And the horse looks after you, and you look after the horse. Burmese retired in 1987 after 18 years of service to the Queen, was turned out to pasture at Windsor Castle, remaining always close to Queen Elizabeth. Heather Shear Roll's father, Gavin, or Tex Shear, was one of Burmese's early trainers. And then this, of course, is where Burmese was born and trained. Yeah, Dad was stationed there in the very early 60s. Just the smell of horses and always on Dad's clothes. <laughs> what did he tell you of the horse? Very, a smart horse, a steady horse, and he, again, he just knew that it would be a good choice to present the Queen with. My mom Heather's father passed away in 2020, but she proudly keeps his boots, pictures, old invitations to royal events. A gentle reminder of her family's connection to Queen Elizabeth and Burmese. When his memory started to fail, um, the one thing that he went back to his, his so-called happy place, sometimes he would think he was still in, um, in the barracks. He would talk about being in the stable. Heather, in some ways, feels a direct connection to Queen Elizabeth, even wrote her to explain how. I've wanted to write it for a very long time. I wanted to honor my father's story and share it with her. And so I wanted to, to share that because I felt that she would appreciate knowing that because she, she really enjoyed the receipt of that gift of, of Bur Burmese for all those years. Burmese died at 28. She's even buried at Windsor Castle, a rare honor. This is a further recognition, a statue in the province of her birth, one unveiled by the Queen herself at Saskatchewan's legislature. Heather was there with her dad. You had to wonder what the monarch thought looking up. 
That woman standing beside her is the artist, Susan Velder. And Susan sure remembers how she got answers from the palace about a horse she never met and a difficult-to-sculpt hat the Queen often wore. And so I phoned, and this lady answered. And uh, she said, well, uh, will you be in your studio tomorrow? And I said, oh, yeah. And she said, well, we'll call you tomorrow. And so I, we hung up. And it wasn't 10 minutes later that uh, the phone rang, and it was the same lady. And she said, I just stepped in to see Her Majesty. And she said, if you promise to send it back, she'll send you the hat. And she did. She sent the hat, and you can't imagine, David, the, the hullabaloo that made in our little town. And wouldn't you know it, but months after sending her letter to the Queen, Heather got a personal reply. And then I saw the Buckingham Palace um, crest, and I stopped breathing for a bit. The letter, now a treasured keepsake, is safely tucked away at home out of today's rain. She initially thanked me very much for sharing um, the, uh, my father's story and I think she even referred to Burmese as um, her beloved horse um, and it was yeah it was a very very friendly warm letter. For the vastness of time and history across the Queen's reign it's often those small personal moments which have left such a big impact.